Hey YouTube, Philly J here with Third Dimension Gaming, coming at you with my Malefic deck profile. So Malefics were first debuted in the Bonds Beyond Time movie, which featured uh, a duelist from the distant future taking uh, ace monsters of the rivals from the protagonist. So you've got like Blue Eyes, Red Eyes, uh, Rainbow Dragon, Cyber End Dragon, Stardust Dragon, I guess is the only protagonist monster. But he's taking dragons and turning them evil within the, uh, the lore, I guess, of the show. And I think that's one of the coolest lores behind a deck that we've seen in a long time. It's you take the good guy, you destroy it to make the evil version, and then you use that evil version to concoct your evil plan. And the idea of this duelist is to erase dual monsters from the history of the game forever existing. Which I disagree with because I love this game. But these cards look really cool. With that being said, let's get started. We're going to start with our ace monster, our big boy himself, the Malefic Truth Dragon. So this card is one of the most insane cards for its time of release in one of the worst decks of its time of release. So all the Malefics have the same effect, where either if there's not Malefic World or a face-up field spell, they destroy themselves. And they also have the clause you can only control one malefic monster. And if you control a malefic monster, it's the only monster that can attack on your field. Now this is Yu-Gi-Oh! So we have ways of kind of getting around our own effects. But as far as malefic truth dragon goes, this card is nuts. So if a malefic monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can pay half your life points to summon it from your hand or your graveyard. And if it attacks and destroys an opponent's monster by battle, destroy all face-up monsters your opponent controls. So when this card was first released, it was like Lightning Vortex on legs. But the legs were 5,000 attack points. It was an absolute monster in a deck that was so hung up on its own effects that it was almost unplayable but now we're in an era where the deck can move kind of fast and I've had hands where I end on four malefic monsters with over 15,000 attack points on the field it's a very very cool very fun deck and it's all because of this humongous monster And then for some of our other big dragons, we're playing quite a few big dragons, actually. We're playing three copies of Malefic Paradigm Dragon, three copies of Malefic Cyber End Dragon, and three copies of Malefic Stardust Dragon. Now, I did actually just get finished watching the Bonds Beyond Time movie to kind of get my head in order for this deck profile. So what we learn is that the Malefics are evil versions of good monsters, and the way to do that is you have to destroy the good version to summon the evil version. So the way that works in the mechanics of the deck is that you have to banish the original version of Stardust, Cyber End, and in the case of Malefic Paradigm Dragon, you banish a Malefic monster from your extra deck, and at point of recording, there's only one. So yeah, you kill the original to summon the evil version, which I think is very cool. And they've all got unique effects. So Malefic Cyber End has the same effects as its counterpart, and then it just does piercing battle damage. But at 4,000 attack piercing damage, watch out. Malefic Paradigm Dragon can target a banished level 8 synchro monster, put it back in your extra deck, and then immediately summon that monster. And then for the rest of the turn, you can only attack with Malefic Monsters. And I did misspeak, the Malefic Paradigm Dragon also needs Malefic World on the field to be able to summon it. Now Stardust Dragon is the best one for sure. So obviously the same summoning condition, I have to banish the original version of itself to get it on the field. But this one has a very interesting effect. In that as long as this card is face up on the field, Field spells cannot be destroyed. 
which actually gives you a lot of protection for your Maleth of World, which is the most important card in your deck. And it's important to know that all the Malefics have the same effect, where you can only have one face-up Malefic monster on the field. But we have ways around that. I mean, this is Yu-Gi-Oh! What would we be doing if we weren't just cheating our way through to the game? It's right there. Now for some more of our utility cards, we're going to play three copies of Malefic Paradox Gear and one copy of Malefic Parallel Gear. So these are the cards you use to get out your Synchro because this one gets you access to this one and this one's effect is very cool. So for starters, Malefic Paradox Gear. If a face-up field spell is on the field, you can tribute this card, special summon one Malefic Parallel Gear from your deck, then add one Malefic Monster from your deck to your hand. Very cool effect. And then if a Malefic Monster would banish a card to summon itself, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. And you can only use each effect once per turn. Now Parallel Gear has a very unique effect, and I think it was the first effect of this kind. If you use this card as Synchro Material, the other cards in your hand, if it's a Malefic, can be in your hand to do the Synchro Summon. So what that means is if you Paradox Gear to get out your Parallel Gear, you can search your Stardust Dragon and then Synchro with your Parallel Gear and your Stardust, despite the fact that Stardust is going to be in your hand when you perform the Synchro Summon. Again, very, very cool effect, and I know there's a lot of ways to kind of fiddle with Synchro Summoning in the game at this point. This was very early on a powerful way to Synchro Summon, especially getting out a very strong level 10 monster. The only problem is that the second wave of support in our Paradox Gear in our Paradigm Dragon came out so late compared to the rest of the cards, they really kind of passed their prime as far as like a meta contender. Now as far as non-Malefic monsters in the deck, we are playing a Banish Heavy deck, so we're going to play three copies of Grand Maju de Iza and three copies of Eater of Millions. And these are very good cards to become huge, huge powerhouse monsters while hiding behind these huge dragons. Where your opponent, you know, you keep swinging at them with huge 5,000, 4,000 attack monsters, and they're slowly kind of losing resources, losing life points, and then suddenly you drop this level 3, and you've got 20 banished cards, and it's got 8,000 attack points. Again, very cool, very cool cards. So, uh, let me explain these effects before I move on. So, Grand Maju de Iza gains 400 attack for every banished card. All of, sorry, all of your banished cards. Which, again, we're playing stuff like Pot of Desires. We're playing a lot of all these dragons banished something to summon themselves. We're just going to keep fueling our Grand Maju to make it, get it bigger and bigger and bigger. And Eater of Millions, to summon itself, needs to banish at least five cards from your field, your hand, or your extra deck. And what a lot of people used to do when this card first came out is they would just pick up their extra deck and just banish it face down. And Eater of Millions gains 100 attack for every banished card that's yours and your opponent's. And when Eater of Millions battles an opponent's monster, before damage calculation you can banish that opponent's monster face down. And one final really important piece of this card, it cannot be tributed used for a fusion, synchro, or exease summon. But it can be used for a link summon because it was printed before links existed. That's your monster count. We're on 20 monsters. You can obviously, you know, mess with the ratios as you see fit. You can throw in the other Malefic monsters. The only reason that we're using these nine specifically is because they only have to banish stuff from the extra deck to summon themselves whereas if you play something like the rainbow dragon or the blue eyes or the red eyes you have to play those counterparts in your main deck to be able to summon them to the field and the one thing you don't want to do is brick on a couple blue eyes white dragons in a deck where you can't summon blue eyes white dragon 
For our spells, we're obviously playing the best card in our deck, Malefic World. It's our field spell. It's the one of the coolest arts in the game, I feel. It's very cool, very unique. Uh, what this card does is, while it's phase up on the field, instead of your normal draw per turn, you can reveal three Malefic cards in your deck, and your opponent will add one of them to your hand randomly. And then you shuffle the other two back into your deck. So ideally, what you would do is, you would just reveal three of the same card, and your opponent goes, okay, I guess I'll pick. It gets random, so they go face down, your opponent says, okay, I'll grab that one, and then the other two get shuffled in, and you don't have to show what it is to your opponent, because it is at random. And very cool way to get access to some of your better cards in the deck. But what if we had an even better way to get access to some of our cards in our deck? Introducing the single best card in our deck, hands down, no questions asked. Malefic Territory. This card is absolutely incredible in this deck. So when you activate it, you can activate Malefic World directly from your deck, no ifs, ands, or buts. While this card is on the field, neither player can target cards in the field zone with card effects, which means if you have this card and Malefic Stardust on the field, your opponent cannot target your Malefic World, and they cannot destroy your Malefic World, which means they can't even use Cosmic Cyclone. You've got complete protection from your field spells. The only thing your opponent can do is activate a field spell on top of your field spell, which, unless they're playing set rotation, they're not going to do. Now, this card would be good if that's all it did, but it does even more. It changes the effect of your Malefic Monsters. It changes them from you can only control one Malefic Monster to you can only control one Malefic Monster of each name. So that means that one, so instead of only being able to control one Malefic Stardust Dragon completely, the only Malefic you control, you can only control one Malefic Stardust, one Malefic Cyber End, and one Malefic Paradigm. The fact that it changes the effects is completely incredible, and I love it. And I also like that it uses the lore of the deck to kind of alter it and make it a little bit better. And finally, because this card has got four effects, in the battle phase, all your Malefic Monster effects are negated. Now, that's important to know. Because, while this card is incredibly powerful, does negate the effect of your Malefic Truth Dragon, so you cannot completely blow out your opponent's entire board while this is on the field. That being said, usually if you have Malefic Truth Dragon out, it's the only Malefic monster that you do have out, so your opponent gets rid of this, you're kind of okay with it. We're going to play a couple two of We're going to play two copies of Malefic Selector and two copies of Malefic Divide. Now again, mess with the ratios as you see fit. This is just what I've found works best for me and my playstyle. Malefic Selector, banish two Malefic cards from your graveyard to add two Malefic cards from your deck to your hand, except for itself. And they have to have different names from each other and from the banished cards. Now that does kind of seem like a bad restriction, but when you think about the fact that you're probably just going to be banishing your small Malefic Monsters, you're going to be searching two dragons or your territory and a dragon. You know, it's two things that are hugely, incredibly powerful. And then Malefic Divide. Target one Malefic Monster in your graveyard. It's special summon, ignoring its summoning conditions, but its effects are negated, and it's banished in the end phase. So again, just get a huge, huge dragon for free, swing at your opponent, and then either link it, overlay it, whatever you need to do to get it off the field in a way that it doesn't get banished, or banish it if you're just fueling the fire for your Grand Maju. And then for the last couple spells in the deck, we're playing three copies of Pot of Desires, one Called by the Grave, and the one Terraforming. Now the reason that we're playing Desires over something like Prosperity or Pot of Extravagance is that while we don't go into our extra deck a lot in this deck, you absolutely need your extra deck. 
And the reason you need it is because you need access to these monsters in order to summon out your other malefic monsters. Again, you have to destroy the original to summon the evil version. So we're going to banish 10 off the top of our deck, and we're going to draw 2. And then what happens when you banish 10 cards from the top of your deck? Your grand module attack becomes 4,000. Again, it's a simple, simple deck with some cool interactions that just fuels the fire of your huge, gigantic monsters. And then Called by the Grave is just to deal with some interruption, and Terraforming just gives us better access to our field spell. It's a simple, straightforward deck that I absolutely adore playing because I love summoning up gigantic, huge, bonkers monsters. And then we're playing a couple traps. We're playing two copies of Malefic Claw Stream and then three copies of Dogmatica Punishment. Now we're playing the Claw Stream because it is just Icarus Attack for Malefics. And what that means is if you have a face-up Malefic of any name, you can target an opponent's monster and destroy it. And then Dogmatica Punishment is just kind of one of those cards to deal with your opponent's board in difficult situations because you target a face-up monster your opponent controls, send one monster with equal or higher attack from your extra deck to the graveyard, and then destroy that opponent's monster. And then until the end of your next turn, you cannot summon from the extra deck. Now, this is obviously a trap card. We're obviously going to use it on our opponent's turn. It's important to know that the things that we're summoning in our extra deck are only in cases of absolute desperation. Most of it is just fuel or some cool interaction that you can use with Dogmatica Punishment. And that's it for the main deck. A nice crisp 40 cards is to get us some huge, gigantic monsters that I think are really, really cool. Now, for the extra deck, it's really, really simple. You need three copies of Malefic Paradox Dragon, three copies of Cyber End Dragon, three copies of Stardust Dragon. These are the cards you have to play in this deck. These nine cards. Why? Because you need them to summon your other dragons. And this one is just... I, I love summoning Malefic Paradox Dragon. It's genuinely one of my favorite card arts in the game. I think it looks so cool. The summoning of it in the movie was so cool. I loved it. And it's the only monster in your extra deck you will normally summon. The other six cards are not that important to this deck. What you need are these ones to fuel your dragons. So aside from these nine cards, the other six cards in your extra deck are 100% flex spots. Now with that being said, we're going to go over them still. I'm playing three copies of Elder Entity Entis, or Entis, or however you, however you want to say it. And the reason that we're playing this is because it has a really cool combo with Dogmatica Punishment. Because Punishment sends a card from extra deck to the graveyard, and when Entis is sent to the graveyard, it destroys a card on the field. So this is kind of a two-for-one deal, where you use the effect, you send Entis, you destroy a monster, and then Entis destroys another card your opponent controls. And then for the last three cards, I'm just playing Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, and Zero Boros. You know, I like Zero Boros in this a lot because it just fuels the banishment for our secret play, which is just to summon Grand Maju and completely annihilate your opponent. One of the funniest things I've ever seen in a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! is someone having a bunch of banished cards. They set one card face down and they pass turn. Their opponent attacks into it and it ended up being a 12,000 defense Grand Maju to Iza. He did win that game. I mean, you can't take 12,000 damage and survive unless you're playing Egyptian gods, I guess. And I mean, nobody's playing the Egyptian gods. But with that being said, this is the deck profile. I love this deck. I think it's super fun. I think it's super easy to learn. And just 
summon huge gigantic monsters and hit your opponent really really hard over and over again until they either admit defeat or their life points hit zero with that being said make sure to like and subscribe follow us on socials we're on all of them at different dimension gaming join our discord server shout out to deep winner ai for our thumbnails and we'll see you next time